Okay, we've got two moles of molecular hydrogen reacting with one mole of molecular oxygen. And we'll have another hydrogen here. And those are going to be interacting to form two moles of H2O. When that happens, that's also going to release 241.8 kilojoules per mole, which Reaction. Now suppose a spherical vessel with 0.5 meter radius contains 14.4 moles of H2 and 7.2 moles of O2. So that's 14.4 moles of hydrogen and 7.2 moles of hydrogen of oxygen. The temperature is 20 degrees Celsius, which is going to be is going to be 293 Kelvin. And we're going to ask, what is the initial pressure in the vessel? The initial pressure is governed by the ideal gas law, which is PV equals MRT. Let's go ahead and put in there is equal to 2 over the degrees of freedom times U. So what are we going to need? We're going to need the volume of the sphere. The volume of the sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed, which is 4 thirds pi times 0.5 meters, and that to be 0.524 meters cubed. And I think we'll just take, uh, we want to solve that for pressure, so P equals nRT over V, which is number of moles of hydrogen plus the number of moles of oxygen times R, which is 8.31 joules per mole Kelvin times T, which is 293 Kelvin. I'm going to divide by the volume of the gas, which is 0.524 meters cubed. That comes out to be 100,367. What cancels out, you get the joules per meter cubed. A joule is equal to a newton meter per meter cubed. So that is a newton per meter squared. So this is really close to atmospheric pressure, 100,000 uh, That is also equal to a pascal. So Part B, what is the initial internal energy of the gas? Well, as luck would have it, I've already included that in this equation. Let's start by finding either PV or NRT, which is really, I can use most of what I put into the calculator before, and just divide off that, or remove that 0.524. I'll go to second, enter on here. Oops. That brings up what was on the calculator before, and then just hit backspace a few times to get rid of that, and hit enter, and we've got our pressure times, or NRT equals PV equals uh, 52,592, this is in joules, and we want the internal energy, 52,592 joules is only a portion of the internal energy, which is 2, two over 5 times u, because well, we have 5 degrees of freedom in the, mo in the diatomic gases. Now that's a bit of a simplification. I kind of feel like I'm making a fairly big intuitive leap here in assuming that um, there's an, basically an equipartition of energy um, between uh, these five modes of motion and that, you know, an equal amount of energy will be uh, distributed in those five ways. For now, let's just go ahead and finish this problem and then I'll try to describe the, the issue that I'm dis discussing, which amounts to nothing more than multiplying by five halves to get that the internal energy is 131,480 joules. Basically for the O2 you've got the linear x-direction 
the linear y direction and the linear z direction. Those are three of the degrees of freedom. And then you've got the polar rotation and what I think is called precession. And um, we're under we're going under the assumption that there will be roughly an equal amount of energy in each of these four uh, in each of these five uh, direction directional freedoms of motion. And then you've got for the hydrogen, you've also got the same degrees of freedom. And the general assumption is that the same amount of energy is split between um, each of those five groups. Now I think it's um, might not be it's surely not that big of a deal to this class, but let's ask the question: Is this equipartition of energy should be? Is there the same amount of energy in each of these degrees of freedom, or is there the same amount of momentum? in each of these degrees of freedom. In a lot of cases there might not be a big difference between dividing the momentum up equally or dividing the energy up equally, but in some cases I think it can end up being uh, important. And what we've done so far seems to suggest that we divide up the energy equally between those, three, between those five states. But I think what actually may be the case is is that we should be dividing the momentum up equally. Part C. Suppose a spark ignites the mixture and the gases burn completely into water vapor. How much energy is produced? Well, we said that 241.8 kilojoules per mole of water, and we're going to produce from the 14.4 moles of hydrogen, we're going to produce 14.4 moles of water. I multiply that 241.8 times 14.4 and get 3481.92 joules of energy. And now we're going to find the temperature and pressure of the steam, assuming it's an ideal gas. Um, no. I want to reject that premise. Wait. No, I don't. Yes. No, I don't want to reject that premise. It is it is an ideal gas. It's not monatomic, but it is an ideal gas. I keep forgetting that. Monatomic monatomic gases are not the only ideal gas. It goes um P V equals N R T. This is the part that deals with the ideal gas, and then the other part over here, the 2 over degrees of freedom times U, is the part that is not necessarily monatomic. This is the part that deals with the monatomic nature. And I should probably extend that out further. Um, let me put this in there for now, because I'm not quite sure exactly how to write this. I think it's C sub V over R times U. This is the specific heat at constant volume divided by the ideal gas constant. No, it doesn't quite look right to me. I think it's actually the reciprocal of that. R divided by C sub V. Let's check that. Is R divided by C sub V equals 2 divided by the degrees of freedom in general? Um, C sub, yeah, C sub V equals the degrees of freedom divided by 2 times R. And that that is true. So this is correct. So if we want to do this for water, we can look up the uh, specific heat at constant volume for water vapor and use this equation to find out uh, the internal energy. Okay, But anyway, this uh, 3,482 joules was added to the system, and we had some um, energy before. So a big question is, what is that um, 30... 3,482 joules of energy added to. In general, the uh, two places that internal energy can go is to either increase U, the internal energy, or it can increase W, the P delta V. You can, you can, so you can increase the internal energy, or you can do work. And in this case, we've got everything stuck in a sphere. 
a spherical vessel of radius 0.5 meters. So all of this energy is going to go towards increasing the internal energy of the gas. And the uh, no work will be done because the volume is not changing. So basically we're going to start with our initial um, internal energy and we're going to add this heat and we're going to find the final um, uh, internal energy. So we're going to start with this 131,481 and add this uh, 3481, 3482 joules. Oops, 3482 joules. And that's going to give us um, 134,963. And that equals U, the internal energy. And then we're going to need to get, we're going to use the equation uh, PV, it's PV equals NRT equals R over C sub V U equals uh, 2 over the degrees of freedom times U. And we'll look on the chart for uh, water. Where is water? H2O. And notice it says all values except that for water were obtained at 300 Kelvin. Why? Why is water not taken at 300 Kelvin? Because water is not a gas at 300 Kelvin. Water is, this is um, C sub V for steam right here. 27, um, or C sub V is 27 joules per mole Kelvin. So I'll make that C sub V equals 27.0 joules per mole Kelvin, and R is 8.31 joules per mole Kelvin. And you'll see, if you applied that to the idea that that's going to be equal to 2 over degrees of freedom, you'll find that the degrees of freedom of water is about 6.5. Basically, in addition to the, uh, the polar rotation and the precession, it's also got a couple of vibrational modes of energy. You can wiggle back and forth this or I can like these things can jostle back and forth and uh, maybe some other wacky things that you can do with that. But basically you get a more complex molecule and it can might be able to go in and out that way and that way or something and you get just more modes of motion that are available to it to move around in. I'm not going to uh, worry about that right now. What I want to do is finish out this formula with a U over here and a PV over here, where U is 134963 joules, and our volume is 0.524 meters cubed. And then I'll find our pressure is going to be 79,272 joules, or I mean pascals. That's interesting. If I did this right, I mean, the pressure went down quite a lot after the hydrogen and oxygen turned into steam. Bingo! Finally! There we go. So you can see that the uh, piston has gone up a bit, probably went up a bit further but dropped back and uh, so you can see that um, the explosion of the gas was very quickly followed by an implosion of the steam which uh, lifted the fairly weighty piece of aluminium. But what about the temperature? The temperature will have NRT equals R over C to V U. So we can cancel out the R's. And we'll have N is 14.4 moles. C to V is 27.0. And U is 13.4963. So the temperature has gone up to a whopping 347 Kelvin, which is 74 degrees Celsius.